Now let's create the forward arrow that should be showing here when the keyboard moves up. For that, we'll create a similar animated view like this with the position of absolute. So we'll say animated.view, give the view some styles. So firstly, position absolute, height of 60, width of 60, and a right of 10, because we want it to be on the right side. For the bottom right now, we'll give it a value of 10, but this will be animated. And an opacity of one, which would also be animated. Next, we'll set the Z index to 100, just to make sure that it stays above the rest of the view. Now let's put in the icon here. We'll say icon name is equal to, we'll use MD arrow forward. Give it a color of white. And obviously we can't see it right now because it's a color of white. So let's give it a background color. So it's a nice blackish color that we'll give it. So there we're getting the arrow. It obviously does not look like the way we want it to. So let's just add a few properties. Let's say align items of center, justify content of center, and let's give it a border radius of 30, which is half the width. So there we see we're getting the arrow just the way we want it to look. Right now, if we click the text input, we see that the height increases, but once the animation is complete, we want the keyboard to show up. So we can do that programmatically. Let's go to our text input. And here we can add something known as a ref and call this text input mobile. Let's just make the T small. Now we can come here to our animation, which increases the height of the view. And when the animation is complete, we can call a callback function inside the start method. And we can say this dot refs dot text input mobile, the ref that we had given dot focus to focus on the text field. Now if we refresh this and we click this here, we'll see once the animation is complete, the keyboard moves up. However, when we click the back arrow, the keyboard does not move back down. So for that, we'll use keyboard, which is available to us from React Native. So let's import keyboard here. And firstly, inside the decrease height of login, let's just call keyboard.dismiss. Now, if we click here, it opens up and then the keyboard shows. When we click the back arrow, the keyboard hides and it goes away. Now to move up this arrow with the keyboard, we need to write some listener methods. For that, we'll come here to the component will mount and we'll write the method. So the method we want to create is, let's call it keyboard will show. We'll use the keyboard dot add listener and the listener that we're looking for is keyboard will show and we'll bind that to the keyboard will show. Next, we want this dot keyboard will hide is equal to keyboard dot add listener keyboard will hide and we'll bind it to this dot keyboard will hide. So basically what will happen is when the keyboard shows the keyboard will show method will fire when the keyboard hides the keyboard will hide method will fire. However, for Android keyboard will show and keyboard will hide are not available. What we need to use is keyboard did show and keyboard did hide. So I'm just going to copy this and then change this over. So we change keyboard will show to keyboard did show. Here, the listener we're looking for is keyboard did show. However, it points to keyboard will show only so that we don't have to duplicate the methods. And here we'll make this keyboard did hide, which will look for keyboard did hide. But they will again point to the same method, which is keyboard will hide. So let's create the keyboard will show and keyboard will hide methods here. So it gets an event parameter, which we can use to get the height of the keyboard. And we need to animate three things inside this. One is the opacity of this arrow. One is the bottom position of this arrow. And one is the bottom border here. So for that, let's just create three more properties. We'll do that in the component will mount. So let's call the one for the bottom position. This dot keyboard height is equal to new animated dot value of zero to start with. So we say this dot forward arrow opacity, which will again be a new dot animated value of opacity is zero to start with. And let's also put a border bottom here. So border bottom width is equal to new animated dot value of zero. Let's animate these values now. So we want them to animate in parallel. So we'll say animated dot parallel. Inside that we can use an array. 
and the first one will be animated dot timing put in this dot keyboard height the duration we want to use is the event dot duration which is the time taken for the keyboard to move up plus a delay of 100 and then we want to move the value to event dot end coordinates dot height plus 10 so that it's slightly above the keyboard and it lags the keyboard a little because we put in a delay of 100 milliseconds. This is going to go in place of the bottom position of this arrow. The next thing that we want is animated dot timing. What we're looking for is this dot forward arrow opacity. The duration is again going to be event dot duration in this case. We're not going to add a delay that's not required and two value is going to be one. I'm just going to duplicate this. And we'll change this to border bottom width and again it will be animating from 0 to 1. Now we need to set these values up in place of the hard-coded values. So come to our forward arrow here and let's change the bottom to the keyboard height. So we'll say this dot keyboard height. Let's change the opacity to this dot forward arrow opacity. And in the text input let's change the parent view from a view to an animated view. And here let's add a border bottom width of this dot border bottom width. When we save that and refresh this, we see that the arrow is not here anymore. But when we click this text input here, we get an error. And I see that error is a very basic mistake that I made over here. So when we name these uh, subscribers of ours, we can't name them the same as the method. So all we need to do is we need to just add, suppose, listener at the end of it. And there we go, that should solve our error. Let's refresh this. Now if you click on this, it should be working. And it seems like I've forgotten something else as well. Here we did not start the animation. So animated.parallel and just put in a start here. Now let's try this and hope this works. And there we see it nicely moves up at the top. If we put this back, we're just getting an error because we haven't written the keyboard will hide method. So let's put that in here. So we'll say keyboard will hide. Again, we'll get the event. And in this, we'll just copy these methods here. So then we've got the same methods. All we're gonna do here is we're gonna just change this to zero. We're gonna change that opacity to zero and we're gonna also change the border width to zero. There's one thing to note over here. Android does not have this event method since it can only detect keyboard did hide. So the event method is already completed. For that, what we'll do is we'll import something known as platform from React Native to detect if it, the device was an Android device. And here in the did hide method, what we'll say is if platform.os is equal equal to Android, then set the duration equal to 100, else set the duration equal to event.duration because iOS devices do have access to the event method. And here we'll just replace event.duration with duration this will make sure that this works for Android. Also, I notice if you move this into the keyboard will show method, the duration tends to work better for Android. Otherwise, it will just fade away and change this event.duration to just duration. Now let's save this and test this out. If you click this, we see that that moves up. Obviously, this animation will be much smoother on a real device. And we move that down, it goes away. Now let's just finish up the last few animations. We want this to change to a number when this is clicked on. For that, we'll utilize the state. So let's write a constructor for that quickly. Inside this, we'll say this dot state is equal to placeholder text. It'll be enter your mobile number. Let's replace the placeholder with this. And when the height increases, we'll change the state. So let's come to increase height. And here at the top, we'll just say this dot set state, placeholder text, and change that to 092123456789. Let's just refresh this. And there we see we're getting enter your mobile number. If we click on it, it changes to the number that we had just created. 
Also, we want to enter your mobile number to move here to the top. For that, we'll just create another text view, which we'll put inside our touchable opacity. Here, where we have increased height of login, we'll change this parent view to an animated view. Here, where we use the margin top for this particular field, let's change that to the margin top variable that we had created. As we see, it's moved down nicely to a bottom position. Inside this, we'll put in another animated.text. Let's style it. So we'll say font size of 24, color of gray, position will be absolute, bottom position will be, we'll create this variable, let's call it title text bottom, left position will be title text left, and the opacity will be title text opacity. So the text will be enter your mobile number. Now let's create these three variables. So come here to the top where we had our constants. Let's just copy this constant. I've copied it three times. The first one is going to be title text left. The next one is going to be title text bottom. And the last one is going to be title text opacity. The title text left should have a starting value of 100 and it should move up to a left value of 25 so that it feels like it's moving leftwards. Secondly, the bottom position should be zero and it should move up to a position of 100. However, till the time the screen has reached a height of 400, we want it to remain at zero and only once this height increases past 400 do we want it to change to 100. So for that, we'll just put in another zero here. Title text opacity will just be zero to one. Let's save this out. Let's refresh this. And as you can see, it smoothly just moved up to the top with this arrow coming up. One last thing that's left is we want this keyboard to just be a numeric keyboard. So all you need to do is come to the text input and change the keyboard type by saying keyboard type and make it numeric. Click here. And as you can see, we're getting a numeric keyboard with all the animations that we have thought of. One last thing that you guys might be thinking is this screen at the back, the image, tends to load after everything else has loaded. That's because we need to pre-cache this image. That's a process that's a, a slightly long. Maybe I'll cover it some other time. But for now, this animation works just like we thought. I hope you guys like this and try this out.